In a world where legends are born and myths are made, one name stands out above the rest, David Crockett. He was a man of mystery, a true enigma of his time. What made him so unique? How did he become the stuff of legend? Who was David Crockett really? These are the questions that haunt the people of Lawrenceburg, and they're the questions that you'll be asking yourself as you delve into this gripping tale of mystery and intrigue. So join us on this journey through the life and times of David Crockett. Discover the truth behind the myths and find out what it really takes to become a legend. Are you ready to enter the world of David Crockett? David Crockett's life was shaped by the challenges and opportunities of the American frontier. Born in 1786 in Tennessee, Crockett grew up in a rural and impoverished environment. He received little formal education, but he quickly developed a set of skills that would serve him well in his future endeavors. Crockett's childhood was marked by hardship and struggle. He was the fifth of nine children, and his family struggled to make ends meet. As a young boy, Crockett helped his family by working on the farm and hunting wild game in the surrounding woods. He became an expert marksman and developed a reputation as one of the best hunters in the area. In 1813, Crockett joined the Tennessee militia to fight in the Creek War. He served under General Andrew Jackson and fought in several battles, including the Battle of Tallahatchie and the Battle of Horseshoe Bend. During the war, Crockett distinguished himself as a brave and fearless soldier, and he was awarded a medal for his service. After the war, Crockett returned to Tennessee and became involved in local politics. He was elected to the Tennessee State Legislature in 1821, and he quickly gained a reputation as a strong advocate for the rights of poor farmers and frontiersmen. He was known for his honesty and integrity, and he became a popular figure in Tennessee politics. Crockett's political career was marked by his passionate defense of the common people. He believed that the government should serve the needs of ordinary citizens, rather than just the wealthy and powerful. He fought for better roads, schools, and other public services, and he advocated for the rights of farmers and frontiersmen to own and use their land. In 1835, Crockett was elected to the United States Congress as a representative from Tennessee. He continued to fight for the rights of the common people, and he became a strong voice against the policies of President Andrew Jackson. However, Crockett became disillusioned with politics and the corruption he witnessed in Washington, and he decided not to run for re-election in 1837. After leaving Congress, Crockett decided to move west to Texas, where he hoped to start a new life. He settled in San Antonio, and he became involved in the Texas Revolution against Mexico. In early 1836, Crockett and a group of volunteers arrived at the Alamo, a fortified mission in San Antonio which was being held by a small group of Texans. In December 1834, Davy Crockett expressed his desire to move to Texas if Martin Van Buren, Jackson's chosen successor, was elected as the president. The following year, he discussed with his friend Benjamin McCulloch the possibility of raising a company of volunteers to take on Texas in anticipation of an impending revolution. However, Crockett's departure to Texas was delayed due to his appearance in court as a co-executor of his deceased father-in-law's estate. Finally, on November 1, 1835, Crockett left his home near Rutherford in West Tennessee with three other men to explore Texas. His youngest child, Matilda, Remember the last time she saw her father, who was dressed in his hunting suit, wearing a coon skin cap, and carrying a fine rifle presented to him by his friends in Philadelphia. He seemed very confident that he would soon have his family join him in Texas. Crockett traveled with 30 well-armed men to Jackson, Tennessee, where he gave a speech from the steps of the Madison County Courthouse. They arrived in Little Rock, Arkansas on November 12, 1835, and hundreds of people swarmed into town to catch a glimpse of Crockett. A group of leading citizens put on a dinner in his honor at the Jeffreys Hotel, where he spoke mainly about Texan independence and Washington policies. In early January 1836, Crockett arrived in Nacogdoches, Texas, where he signed an oath before Judge John Forbes to the Provisional Government of Texas for six months. Each man was promised about 4,600 acres of land as payment. On February 6, he and five other men rode into San Antonio de Bejar and camped just outside the town. Crockett arrived at the Alamo Mission in San Antonio on February 8. A Mexican army led by General Antonio Lopez de Santa Ana arrived on February 23 and immediately initiated the siege. 
the guns were moved closer to the Alamo each day, increasing their effectiveness. On February 25, Mexican soldiers crossed the San Antonio River and took cover in abandoned shacks near the Alamo walls, prompting several men to volunteer to burn the huts. To provide cover, the Alamo cannons fired grape shot at the Mexican soldiers, and Crockett and his men fired rifles, while other defenders reloaded extra weapons for them to use in maintaining a steady fire. As the siege progressed, Travis sent many messages asking for reinforcements. Several messengers were sent to James Fannin, who commanded the group of Texian soldiers at Presidio La Bahia in Goliad, Texas. Fannin decided that it was too risky to reinforce the Alamo. Although up to 50 of his men left his command to go to Bejar, these men would have reached Cibolo Creek on the afternoon of March 3, where they joined another group of men who also planned to join the garrison. There was a skirmish between Mexican and Texian troops that same night outside the Alamo. Historian Walter Lord speculates that the Texians were creating a diversion to allow their courier John Smith to evade Mexican pickets. However, Alamo survivor Susanna Dickinson said in 1876 that Travis sent out three men shortly after dark on March 3, probably a response to the arrival of Mexican reinforcements. The three men, including Crockett, were sent to find Fannin. On March 6, the Mexican army attacked just before dawn, while the defenders were sleeping, ending the siege. Most of the non-combatants gathered in the church sacristy for safety, while Crockett and other defenders fought fiercely against the Mexicans. The only thing that can be confirmed about what happened to David Crockett is that he perished at the Alamo on the 6th of March, 1836, at the age of 49. However, the details of Crockett's death are uncertain, as the stories from survivors of the battle vary greatly. Some claim that Crockett bravely fought to the bitter end, while others suggest that he surrendered with a few other soldiers and was subsequently executed. Historians have amassed an abundance of evidence to support both contradictory theories. If you thought the sights and sound of the Old West were impressive, just wait until you see these astonishing photos that will transport you back in time. From dusty cowboys to lawless outlaws, so don't hesitate. Click on the link and watch the astonishing Old West photos you should see. Trust us, you won't regret it.